Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video today. If you are thinking about starting a podcast, but you don't want to have to go through figuring out what equipment you need or the editing process or researching what really goes into making a high quality podcast, check us out at www.straightuppodcast.com or check out our podcast, PodLogic, for really short episodes on actionable ways to immediately improve your podcast or speed up the launch process if you're just starting out. So this video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna be talking about this New York Times article that came out about a week ago uh, by Jessica Miller, or Jennifer Miller, excuse me, uh, called Have We Hit Peak Podcast? And the reason I bring this up is because this article basically just slams podcasting in general, saying it's fading out of existence, that's the new blog, it's, it's not here to stay, but the problem I have with it is they didn't really talk to real podcasters. They talked to people who clearly were getting into it for the money, but we'll get into the article uh, right now. So it starts off in 2016, Morgan Mandriota and Lester Lee, two freelance writers looking to grow their personal brands, decided to start a podcast. Congrats. Way to go. A lot of people are doing that these days. They called it the advice podcast and put about as much energy into the show's production as they did the name. After all, knowing after all, no one was paying them for this yet. Each week, the friends, neither of whom had any professional experience dispensing advice, keep that logged in your brain, met in a free room at the local library and recorded themselves chatting into an iPhone 5. So this is who they assume are the people starting podcasts, are two nobodies who want to start a podcast on A, a topic that they're not well-versed in or experts in, and B, recording on an iPhone 5 in a room at the public library. So you're recording in poor studio conditions. You're recording with, I'm guessing, not microphones, and you're both talking into your phone. That is three things for a perfect recipe for a shitty podcast. So for them to highlight these people right off the, right off the bat and talk about have we hit peak podcast? It's because they were talking to these types of people. If they talk to any of the big names in podcasting right now, or even myself, they would have had a completely different story, but we'll, we'll go on. Quote, we assumed we'd be huge and have affiliate marketing deals and advertisements. Stop. Are you serious? You'd be huge doing an advice podcast that you're not good at giving advice, recording at the library on an iPhone 5, having huge affiliate marketing deals and advertisements. First of all, if you've seen any of my other previous videos or you've seen any of the other content put out at Straight Up Podcasts, no, more often than not, your podcast is not going to monetize. It's just not. And that's not why you should be getting into podcasting. You should be getting into it for A, a promotional tool for your product or services, be an aggregate of your company's uh, communications as like an internal comms tool, or C, you're passionate about it and you really care about sharing information on something you're an expert in. In my case, it's podcasting. In these, in these dummies cases, it is talking into their iPhone 5. The article goes on, but six episodes in, when neither Casper Mattresses nor MeUndies had come knocking, the friends quit. So six episodes in, they quit. And this is this is who the New York Times is telling us is the average podcaster. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's not. It's not. You can talk about the trees as much as you want, but if you're not going to serve listeners and do it in a way that's engaging, your chances of going viral are low, she said. Wow, she figured that out pretty quick. The most makeshift podcast calling her show the most makeshift podcast with mediocre advice. So yeah, it's, it goes back to the, it's, this is the main idea. The amount of effort that you put into creating your podcast, that's, you know, the kind of product you're going to be putting out. It's the same thing with anything in life, your relationships, your job, your house. If you don't keep your, if you don't put any effort into keeping your house clean, your house is going to look terrible. So I, I, this just makes no sense to me. It's no, it's no wonder the phrase everyone has a podcast has become a Twitter punchline like the blogs of your podcast with their combination of sleek, high tech and cozy retro low are today's de regular medium. I don't even know what that means. Seemingly adopted by every entrepreneur, freelancer and self-proclaimed marketing guru and even corporation. Yeah, because they work. They work if you do them right. If you do the right things when you're putting together a podcast, it's going to be successful. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be bringing in dollars because of your podcast through advertising, 
excuse me, through advertisers and affiliate marketing, it's by getting your brand out there. It's by building up your brand. It's by promoting your products and services. It's by bringing interesting people on. They put an eye on your company or on your personal brand that drive those further steps, whether that's people hiring your services or buying your products or subscribing to you know your Patreon. There are now upwards of 700,000 podcasts, according to the podcast production ho hosting service Burberry, in between 2,000 to 3,000 new shows are launching each month. So this is actually, it's true, but it's also extremely misleading. Yes, there are 700,000 podcasts out there, but if they were to do even a smidge more little research, they would find out that 75% of those podcasts aren't even in production anymore. That means that there's only about 125,000 podcasts that are actually active. And that makes that number ma that much more manageable in terms of making sure that your podcast actually has a chance at blowing up or doing whatever you set out for it to do, whether that's making you famous, whether that's you know monetizing, whether that's promoting your products. So that's one thing that's super misleading. That's the second thing that's super misleading actually because they brought on two numbskulls who have never podcasted before in their life. The thing about podcasts, uh, this is from Dr. North of uh, USC School of Communication and Journalism, is that it's very, very hard to determine popularity. It's easy for the host to appear to be an influencer and whether anybody finds that podcast or listens to it and the bounce rate, who knows? That is very true. That is the one big problem with podcasts right now is that there's no real determining factor that can show you how many subscribers you actually have. It's very different than something like YouTube where you can actually see a physical number of how many people are subscribed to your channel, to your podcast. It's a lot uh, it's a lot murkier, I guess, but you can still see the amount of downloads that you're getting per episode. And that's sort of how you leverage the success of your show. If you're getting a hundred episodes and, and, and success is different for every different person. If a hundred episodes, a hundred downloads per episode is good for your podcast, then good for you. You've hit that level of success. If you are striving for 50,000, then that's not exactly as successful as you want it to be. The article goes on to say, call him cynical, but Jordan Har Harbinger, the host of the Jordan Harbinger Show podcast, thinks that there is a, quote, podcast, podcast industrial complex. Hosts aren't starting shows because it's a fun niche hobby. They do it to make money and because that will make them an influencer. This is very spot on. And it's like I just talked about in this video. If you're not getting into it because you actually enjoy doing it or you don't or you're looking to actually bring value to your listeners, you're not going to be successful. If you're jumping into podcasting thinking that you're going to hit Joe Rogan level numbers right off the bat, I'm telling you right now, it's never going to happen. Joe Rogan has been podcasting for like 10 years. One, he's a famous comedian. MMA announcer, his network of people that are famous that he knows and that he brings on his podcast are huge. And each episode that he puts out only makes him more and more, more and more famous. Okay. And the fact that he puts all of his episodes, live streams them on YouTube and people make clips, a uh, bunch of compilations, uh, videos of his podcast that only increases his brand. So if you're jumping into it, thinking you're going to be the next Joe Rogan, I, I hate to break it to you. Don't lose your enthusiasm. I definitely think you should keep podcasting, but if you're going into it thinking you're going to hit these Joe Rogan levels of numbers, it's just it's just not going to happen. Article says Mr. Harbinger understands the irony of his position. His own podcast in which he interviews business experts uh, and gives advice on how to be successful gets about 250 downloads, 250,000 downloads per episode and brings in multiple seven figures in advertising revenue annually. So that is an example of an extremely successful podcast. This guy uh, Harbinger was able to leverage the people that he knew, bring them onto his podcast, and that ended up turning into a huge moneymaker for him. Congratulations to him. I wish him all the best. I'm not saying that you can't do that with your own podcast. I'm just saying you need to understand what your lane is and be happy with the success that you have and continue to push, continue to grind. Keep making your podcast better. Keep pushing, keep recording episodes, keep trying to bring on bigger and bigger guests. It's all about the journey, okay? Your podcast isn't gonna monetize overnight, it's just not. And eventually when it does, the amount of hard work, it's gonna feel so much more worth it once you actually hit the point where you're like, wow, this podcast is extremely successful. Then they go on to talk about Joe Rogan. Just because Joe Rogan can do it well, doesn't mean the average Joe can. Uh, this guy, Mr. Pratt, who's the veteran CBC producer and now runs a podcast company, uh, likes to remind clients that the average American commute is under half an hour. Uh, so you've got to respect people's time. So that's the other thing too, is 
if you're going to be putting out three hour long podcasts, it's kind of unreasonable to expect people to listen to three hours worth of content in one sitting. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying you need to understand where your listeners are coming from. And that's where your kind of your analytics look into. So if you're looking at uh, if you're using a hosting platform like Libsyn, you're able to see a lot better analytics. You can see uh, when people are dropping out of the podcast and you can kind of see an average consumption rate, especially on iTunes. If you look at your iTunes uh, podcast analytics, they can show you the average play time of each podcast and you kind of you can kind of adjust your podcast accordingly in terms of length. Yeah, they go on to say that you need to put yourself in the listener's shoes, and that's exactly what I've been harping on. You need to look at it from a standpoint of the listener. Is this 95-minute podcast going to be, uh, is all 95 minutes of that, are all 95 minutes of that really you know, critical to the listener, or can you cut about 40% of that just because it's filler and it's fat, and you really want to cut it down to the really key talking points that your listener should be taking away? So the article goes on, uh, or that's about the end of the article. All I'm saying is, is that no, we haven't hit peak, peak podcasting. I, I don't think we have. Yes, there are a lot of podcasts out there, but the way that people can leverage podcasts and there are so many, so many different routes that you can take when you're starting a podcast. If you're thinking in terms of the Joe Rogan experience and thinking that that's the type of podcast you need to have. Yes, that market specifically is very saturated. The interview podcast uh, kind of style of doing a show is very, very saturated, but podcasting as a whole, we're just in the infancy of it. Um, I really think that there are so many avenues that you can take your podcasting down. I've, I've mentioned them a lot uh, before in the beginning of this video and in other videos, other podcasts that I've done. I just, I don't know. I think it just gives podcasters a bad name. You know, we're doing this because we love it. We are not people who are not experienced advice givers research or uh, renting out a library room and recording on your iPhone 5. That's not who we are. We are people who are passionate about this and, you know, they can have their opinion. I'm going to offer mine. So do with it what you will. I appreciate it if you made it through this entire video of me just kind of ranting on this article. But that kind of wraps it up for today's video. I know it's a bit different, but we will be back later in the week and in the coming weeks with more information on improving your podcast and more podcast knowledge. So we'll see you then.